So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tram Bo. I am CEO and co-founder of Mobi. Um, full disclaimer, I'm not a technologist. Uh, that will be Andrea's part of the talk. Uh, I will focus um, on a very high level overview of the Mobi Web3 technology stack that we are building with our members. And Andreas will do a deep dive, uh, and then we'll show a short mini video that tied all these, um, incorporate, incorporate all these ideas together. Uh, and we'll talk briefly about the fundraising plan. Uh, all that should take up about 30 minutes or so, and we'll open up for questions. Uh, and if you have questions in the meantime, uh, you could type into the chat box and we'll hold off answering them until uh, the session, uh, the question session begin. Um, so thank you. Um, so as mentioned, I'm not a, a technologist. Uh, my background is in chemistry. Um, then I went on to art conservation, uh, working for many museums uh, and NGOs uh, around the world, like UNESCO. Um, I seem to change career about every 10 years or so. Uh, currently, my career is uh, focusing on connected mobility and smart city. Um, so I still have a five, six years left, uh, I think, to, to have to look for another career. Um, but it doesn't matter what industry we work in. Uh, there are a couple of things uh, that are top concern uh, for all industry, uh, we think. Uh, number one being data security and privacy, uh, especially customer PII. And two is uh, interoperability. Um, how do we share data, uh, communicate and transact with each other without having to build new infrastructure, uh, especially if we build in a in new infrastructure, uh, you might have to upgrade it uh, every two years or so. So a little history, um, oh, I went too far. A little history about Mobi and what we're working to help with the data privacy and interoperability issues. Um, back in 2016 and 17, many of our now Mobi members uh, were very excited about blockchain and experimented uh, with many proof of concepts. All found that uh, putting a vehicle, data, or service onto a chain, that was easy. Uh, the hard part was that the applications weren't able to scale uh, and uh, due to a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the industry needs standards, uh, standards on how to identify uh, vehicle, people, things, uh, trips. When does a trip begin? When does it end? And how do you settle transaction, for example? Um, two, companies were using the advanced uh, Web3 technology, uh, but they were still building the Web2 centralized platform and couldn't convince others to go onto them. What do I mean by this? Uh, for example, uh, one OEM spent a lot of money building a, a mass multimodal platform, couldn't convince other OEMs to go onto it. Um, another built a supply chain platform, couldn't convince others to go onto it. A couple of years ago, uh, I talked with a logistic uh, organization, uh, which spent $54 million uh, building a logistic platform and then couldn't convince other logistic uh, carrier to go onto it. Uh, there were many examples, uh, and I think this is the same for other industries out there as well. And so this is why Mobi was launched in 2018. Um, along with our members, uh, we are creating standards uh, and we are building the Web3 infrastructure uh, for connected ecosystem and IoT commerce. So while the word um, blockchain is in our name, uh, we think of it uh, as just one tool among many in our toolbox. Uh, the convergence of the technologies that you see here uh, will permit any connected entity uh, it could be a person, a vehicle, a device, or a piece of infrastructure uh, to have a trusted identity that can directly um, communicate and securely transact uh, with each other not, and not have to go through a centralized uh, platform. So why is trusted identity important? Uh, currently, 60 to 60, 65% of internet traffic is made of bots. Um, I was surprised uh, to learn that. And 40% of total internet traffic is made up of malicious bots. Um, and we have currently 15 billion connected things uh, in use. 
and that number is um, doubling every three years or so. Uh, so how can you do business uh, with something on the internet if you don't know who or what it is that you want to do business with? So Moby and our members are working with other consortia, um, global consortia such as MEF, a telecoms consortium, and AAIS, uh, insurance consortium, uh, to adopt and standardize the trusted identity for our ecosystem, uh, which we call self-sovereign digital twins, or SSDT. Uh, think of them as universal translators, um, so we can speak different languages and understand each other. And they are encrypted locked data vaults, uh, so that no one or organization has access uh, to them, unless they are the owner or the controller of the SSDT. Uh, they will reside on the server of the providers or on um, my device, for example, for, for individual uh, users. Uh, for interoperability and data privacy, uh, we are using W3C um, standards, uh, specifically the decentralized identifiers, uh, DIT standard, and verifiable credentials, the VC standards. Um, <clears throat> W3C uh, stand for the World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, they produce uh, the standard that we use for the internet uh, today. Um, so what is Mobi Web3 infrastructure? Uh, you hear the word Web3 all the time. What is it exactly? Um, essentially, it's a new iteration of the internet, uh, which incorporates concepts such as uh, decentralization, blockchain, self-sovereign identity. Um, and uh, Web1 was read-only. Uh, and Web2, you can read and write. So therefore produce content and interact with each other on social networks, for example. And Web3 enables you to also own your identity. So you can read and write and own your identity and the content that you create, uh, your PII, your data, so you can monetize it the way you see fit. Mobi is building the Web3 infrastructure that you see here. Um, on the left side, you see three layers. And layer one is the protocols. Uh, we are technology agnostic, um, so we don't endorse any specific blockchain. Uh, 10 years from now, you don't know uh, which chain will still be around. Uh, instead, we are building the layer two, uh, the ITN, Integrated Trust Network. Uh, think of it as a bridge that connects all the different chains to make them interoperable. And then we also is uh, building the layer three, which is the marketplace uh, with our members. Uh, this is the federated marketplace uh, where all the killer apps of our members uh, can reside. I call this um, infrastructure separation for decentralization uh, because no one entity has all the information that can put together uh, to make up the pieces of the puzzle that, that, uh, that is me uh, or an organization. So it's ensuring data privacy uh, for the end user and the providers. And on the high level, and Andreas will go uh, more into details, uh, there are three actors in this ecosystem. There's the issuer, the holder, and the verifier of credentials. Credentials could be your driver license. The issuer would be the DMV, the holder would be uh, myself, and then the verifier would be the TSA uh, when I get uh, to the airport. Or, all transactions uh, are initiated and stored by the SSDT, the self-sovereign digital twins. So when an entity issue a VC, a verifiable credential, uh, they embed uh, their DID uh, or digital uh, identifier, digital signature into the VC for future verification. Uh, currently, we have a similar process uh, like DocuSign, for example. Uh, when you send a contract, two people signed it for future verification. Um, the, the unique thing is that, so we saw, we're trying to do the same thing, but we use doing uh, advanced technology. So the SSDT will generate a did, a different did for each one of the contract, each one of the VC, um, so that you don't use the same did or the same signature over and over again, uh, which is not recommended. And then the did uh, are registered on the ITN. Uh, dids do not contain or store any information uh, so there's no sensitive information, no, no PII, none of that. Uh, did such as identifiers, like your emails or your phone numbers, ways that people uh, can get in touch with you. Uh, think of the ITN as a phone book, a yellow page. Uh, it's been a while since 
any of us has seen a yellow page or phone book. And reason being uh, because I think Google has become the de facto phone book for all of us. Uh, think of how many times a day uh, you Google something. So if you want to look up something or someone or a service being offered, you use the public communication channel, the ITN. And the moment you decide to do business, uh, you pick up the phone and you call them and that will be happening in the private communication channel, uh, Setopia. And so for now, blockchain is only being used as a DITS registry for uh, redundancy and security. Uh, that might change in the future, but we definitely don't want to store data on chain. This is a very high level architecture overview that um, Andreas will deep, deep dive into it. Um, all our members and MEF members and AIS members uh, run nodes uh, on the ITN. Um, and this is uh, the ITN again has copies of all the DIDs being generated by the SSDTs uh, for redundancy and and security. And in a, in a little bit, uh, I'll show a three minute video uh, and around at a minute 50 second, it will, um, th this concept will be illustrated. So our 2023 roadmap is for our members to run nodes on Setopia as well. Uh, as you can see here, the SSDT reside on the user device or provider server and it interact, uh, enable the service provider and their legacy system to interact directly uh, with each other. Um, we have uh, we are running many pilots with our members. Um, I won't go into details uh, on them at, at all here. Uh, if you're interested, please go to our website dlt.mobi uh, to read up on them. Uh, the one use case that I want to draw attention to uh, that we think is foundational uh, for the new economy of movement is the dealer floor plan audit. A uh, dealer floor plan audit essentially is when you go purchase a vehicle uh, from a dealer, uh, you have anywhere from 10 to hundreds of vehicles on the lot, and those vehicles are being financed by a bank. So the bank wants to know if the vehicles are still around and not being sold, and if they sold, they want their money back so that they can do other things uh, with their money. Um, so what exactly are we demonstrating in the dealer floor plan? Uh, audit that we think could be foundational to the new economy of movement. Um, just a brief history because it took us a little while to get here. Uh, first, in 2019, the first standard uh, we uh, issued was the Mobi VID, vehicle identity. Uh, and um, that standard combined the VIN standard, which we all know, with W3C DID standard uh, to create a machine readable uh, tamper evident trusted vehicle identity. Fast forward a couple of years, we issued the Mobi Trusted Trip Standard and that um, combines, that links the trusted identity with the trusted location into a verifiable trip. Um, however, as we all know, uh, location is PII. So how do we um, make location private? And to do that, we implement zero knowledge proof uh, ZKP. ZKP just means you can prove that you know something without revealing the information. And we implement a Z different ZKP for different application. Uh, for this specific pilot, uh, ZKP implementation allowed us to ping the vehicle and ask the vehicle, are you in this geofence location? And the geofence location is the dealership. And then all the uh, vehicle does is answer back yes or no. Um, doesn't reveal any other location if it's outside the lot, if somebody's um, in the car driving. Uh, so if you ping it once an hour uh, for 24 hours or for three days, whatever the time frame is, and if the vehicle consistently say no, uh, then we have a problem. Um, so all these things, all these things I'm talking about, the four things, trusted identity, trusted location, zero knowledge proof, and interoperability by using W3C standards. Uh, to communicate and transact on the internet. Enable usage-based transactions of all the application that you see listed here on the previous slide, um, including road usage charge, tolling, uh, carbon dioxide emission tracking, uh, and, and uh, reporting uh, the pilot we did with the EU Commission, for example. So at this time, I will stop.
uh, sharing. Um, so Andreas can take over and talk about the deep dive into the technology. Thank you, Trom. Um, let me quickly share my screen. All right, deep dive. Um, not so sure about. I don't want to 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 bore to bore anyone about about you know Ethereum meta transactions or 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 such things. Um, but um, I'm sure you're interested to to um, uh, dive a little deeper. Um, so let's start um, with a, um, a motivational and concrete things why we're doing this. Um, so there are there's net new revenue for business in this new economy, not only of movement, but um, uh, um, uh, for you know telecommunications, etc. So we have. Um, what is 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 on the rise is the sale of bundled digital car services, dynamic five G data, compute services, secure uh, uh, server security, co monetization of shared data from edge with data owners. Uh, that's what we're actually doing with uh, uh, the mass multimodal um, Zootopia pilot, uh, and then sale of new um, uh, AI services based on shared edge data. Um, we're also and that is uh, we're expecting globally that, that that is on the order of 225 billion. Um, uh, cost savings per car, um, we think we can realize about $180 uh, uh, per car in 2030, for real-time service delivery, real-time business service life cycles and simplified service partner onboarding. Um, that's also very key. Um, if you are on Zootopia, you can onboard a new partner um, basically with a couple of clicks. Um, no, no extensive um, IT integration uh, required. It all basically operates um, if you're using Zootopia through the self-sovereign digital twin and the underlying network. And I'll show you in a second how that works. And risk reduction. Um, estimate that the market there is, is about 170 billion in the US alone. How are we addressing that? Trusted identity uh, backed by Mobi, Metro Ethernet Forum, uh, the American Association of Insurance Service Providers, um, and the um, other global uh, companies um, uh, in the ITN network. Um, that also then provides enhanced privacy and security, <laughs> as Trump already mentioned, and therefore enhanced safety. And a very key thing is there is mutualized risk across participants, um, which means you're no longer only holding the bag. There's there's a whole community um, that uh, um, holds the bag with you. Um, as someone famously said, it takes a village in this case, it's a global village of trusted partners. Um, how can these um, opportunities be realized? Well, service providers can offer to Zootopia uh, cross industry edge services. I'm seeing this here. Um, that deliver like complex real time product offerings, including a combination of mobility product offerings, typical telecom product offerings like SASC, SD WAN, 5G network slice, cybersecurity, insurance product, usage-based insurance, location-based insurance, behavior-based security, and safety insurance, for example. So how does that look like? Well, uh, think of a digital service bundle in connected vehicles through Zootopia. That's relevant for fleet managers. Think Avis, uh, um, vehicle manufacturers. Um, Think Ford and GM selling to Avis um, and owners, obviously, um, people who own who own connected cars. What do they need? They need five five G data services. They love the virtual assistant in their um, in their in their car, especially love it when when it drives the car. Um, usage based um, uh, 
insurance pay as you go. Um, I don't need any more insurance on a monthly basis. I purchase it in real time as, as I drive based on how I drive, where I drive and um, EV charging. So what are these services? If you look under the hood, they are complex business processes and actually supply chains. There's supply chain one from the insurer where you need to quote, order, bill, and then settle and deliver that service through Zootopia. Um, charging similarly, you need to quote, order, bill, settle, and deliver. Very, very boring. Very, very important um, because this now comes will combine and will be settled with the owner of the vehicle through Zootopia, um, not necessarily having to directly deal with either of those service providers or directly depending on your, your um, uh, uh, proclivity. Um, um, why does this say supply chain one and supply chain two? Well, if you actually look under the hood and look at telco services, let's say 5G is DS and compute services, there's a there is a a, a significant um, supply chain behind it. How? Well, Zootopia purchases and then offers to 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 the the um, the vehicle owners um, uh, mobility services, mobile services, compute services through actually a wholesaler. Right. Well, the wholesaler because buys the services from a mobile provider, and the mobile provider themselves, because those mobile services need to be secured, buys the security services through a security provider. All of this, Zootopia needs to know that all that the entire supply chain is secure, without knowing necessarily who the mobile provider is or the security service provider, just that that supply chain is um, uh, performing as advertised and is secure and no one is cheating. Hence, as Trump mentioned, zero knowledge proofs. So you can see what is seemingly very simple is actually a very, very long and highly complex supply chain. Um, the other examples, obviously, um, enter into device provenance, secure device registration, secure data services, um, asset titling, um, asset management, tracking and tracing, as Trump already mentioned, asset data monetization, we talked about, and seamless regulatory compliance, which is kind of important too. Let's not, um, let's not um, forget that. So what are the key components to realize the use cases um, as a Zootopia product? Well, um, we need trusted identities and credentials for things, right? Not only for, um, for people and organizations, but for things. Um, in fact, um, over 15 billion things, um, and that number is doubling about every three years, um, uh, maybe even faster. It's hard to keep track of. Um, how do we get these trusted identities and credentials? Um, and we don't want to have to either individually trust Facebook, Google, etc., um, as an identity provider um, through a global through globally trusted uh, parties, the ITN cooperative. It's not one; it's many, and it's not a centralized service. It's a federated service through a common trusted digital infrastructure network, the ITN. Um, that's not enough though. We need standardized service APIs so that people can connect and understand how to talk to each other um, and the entities and the things um, that enable different ecosystem participants to transact in an automated way. Um, um, regardless of the product that's being transacted, which requires standardized product definitions as a software schema that are backed by trusted industry organizations. Mobi and MEF are just two examples of organizations that pr 
produce these types of standardized product definitions, which is really important. Um, and then uh, finally, we need standardized open source frameworks. Uh, why open source? Uh, it's more reliable. Um, you, you have no vendor lock-in. Um, and it's if it's based uh, um, on standards, then you know that it has gone through through some 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 rigorous due diligence. Um, uh, what what type of frameworks do we need? We need frameworks that automate commerce and business uh, using uh, DLT and blockchain as our uh, security and trust anchors. Examples of that is, for example, the MEF 114 standard or the baseline uh, um, protocol. Now, um, we have sort of like our key components assembled or at least uh, loosely assembled. Now let's put them together. So we have here our pilot use case, um, and what is our what does our stack look like? Um, it's based on DLT. So underneath, all the way at the bottom, is a standard space identity core services that are that are based on on um, on um, multiple uh, blockchains, um, either um, permissioned or permissionless. Um, then uh, on top of that. Um, uh, is our standard space self-sovereign digital twins integrated in the uh, um, integrated um, with the uh, core services that enable um, the standard space business automation engine to interact um, with the core services through standards based APIs produced by MEF, Mobi, and W3C that are then combined um, and and that are wrapping. Uh, digital service delivery applications. So this is the high-level stack um, <clears throat> of Zootopia and ITN. Um, where are we at? Well, we have some Zootopia pilots for the digital service delivery, as Trump talked about. We have um, standards-based APIs in usage in uh, um, defined Mobi W three C in particular. Um, running in Zootopia pilots. We have standard space business au um, automation that's also in, in uh, um, running in Zootopia pilots. We have our standard space uh, uh, SSDTs running on the ITN testnet and in Zootopia pilots. And then our beloved identity core services are running on the ITN testnet. So this is not science fiction this is actually running and uh, you can actually participate and test that out. Now, what does it look like in practice? Um, how do these two networks um, operate together? Well, we have the ITN nodes because it's a network that are running, each network runs, uh, um, uh, each node has its own SSDT of the node operator running the core services and they're connected um, actually on two on two levels on the blockchain level um, uh, for the private network um, uh, DLT network and at the data replication level uh, together via uh, standard APIs. So that's great um, but that running by itself is 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 not very exciting. Um, it gets exciting once we have an edge customer and uh, Zootopia providers connected through Zootopia node where the APIs and the SSDTs and the automation engine are running, right? But not all providers um, that the edge customer is utilizing are connected to the same node, right? We have multiple nodes that are um, connected. Um, with each other and to the ITN through the um, uh, 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 ITN to Zootopia um, APIs um, because they have, because a telco service provider, right, connects through a different Zootopia node that still needs to connect to the edge customer. Um, we have insurance service providers yet on another node and the EV charging service provider may be on the same node. And they all need to be able to find and connect to the edge customer and provide their service 
through their uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, what's the best way uh, to say it, facilitated um, through the SS DTs that they are running um, and that they're connecting through through the um, Zootopia nodes. So as you can see, um, this is a loosely coupled architecture uh, of two networks running on top of each other. You can think of Zootopia as an overlay network over the ITN network, which itself is an, is an overlay network over um, the blockchain networks running um, underneath it. And that's it. Um, that's the, um, uh, that's a look under the hood um, of Zootopia uh, and ITN and how they work together and operate together. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Um, this time I'm thinking of sharing just a three minutes video to tie all these concepts together and we'll talk um, briefly high level about our funding plans. So let me share this real quick. Sorry, is there just a short time for, for asking one question? Oh, sure, go ahead. We can do um, questions. Yeah. Uh, my question would be if, the, <clears throat> if Zootopia is running on the ITN and the ITN is a layer two, as you said, I was wondering um, on what the ITN is running. Sorry, I might might be obvious to others, but not to me. Uh, the ITN is uh, you mean which which blockchain is the blockchain. ITN? Yeah. Uh, it's currently um, it's currently using a private instance of of Clipology Fabric, and we're um, uh, adding a public um, EVM based uh, chain to it. Ah, all right. Which okay. is which is very likely going to be a layer two. Um, a layer two that you're going to use. Yes, it's just simply um, for 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 cost and and speed purposes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right. Um, if we at P can help you out with any any of this, um, let us know because we are layer one. If you're looking into that as well, um, we can add more. It's like if you if you want to join the ITN mm -hmm. and uh, um, sign the LOI, uh, work together, run a node. And you want to add your your um, uh, blockchain as a um, as another um, anchor chain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Happy to to um, uh, um, to uh, talk about it. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think. Uh, sorry, I'm taking too too much time off this meeting right now. Oh, um, no, no, no. I'll, I'll reach. I'll reach out to you, Andres. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. So um, definitely all our members are invited uh, to run nodes on the ITN and hopefully next year we'll run nodes on Zootopia as well. Um, so that that is something that uh, we, I think consistently will broadcast because the more, uh, the better, the stronger the network. Any other questions? Okay, this is um, the division that we hope uh, to have. Let me share now and then press play. A guide to Zootopia Vintrack and how it works in Mobi Web3 infrastructure. Modern vehicles are equipped with an array of sensors capable of producing vast amounts of data about the vehicle's location, condition, and more. Trusted Vehicle to Everything, or B2X, data sharing will revolutionize the mobility ecosystem by unlocking countless track and trace applications, such as dealer floor plan automation, vehicle maintenance traceability, and emissions tracking, enabling usage-based mobility use cases such as insurance, road usage charging, congestion management, and seamless multimodal travel. In order for V2X applications to scale, there must be industry-accepted standards to define how trusted vehicle identities are created, shared, and validated. In 2019, Mobi released the first standard, Mobi VID, which leverages the internationally accepted VIN standard and W3C Decentralized Identifier, or DID standard, 
to define a vehicle's self-sovereign digital twin, or SSDT. The vehicle's SSDT combines the vehicle's unique identifiers with key life events to give the vehicle a trusted, machine-readable, tamper-evident, self-sovereign identity. Setopia SSDTs are used to store data for trusted V2X transactions, enabling interoperability and business automation across value chains. In a federated Web3 marketplace, SSDTs are linked to DIDs anchored in a trusted network. Mobi is building the Integrated Trust Network, or ITN, with its members and other consortium members to provide trusted identity services. Together, the ITN and Setopia provide a Web3 infrastructure for connected vehicle and IoT commerce. Setopia Vintrack leverages the Mobi Trusted Trip Standard to link a vehicle's self-sovereign identity with its timestamp location and pertinent metadata into a verifiable trip. These trips, along with any transactions made along the way, are executed on Setopia and stored in the vehicle's SSDT. The SSDT is an encrypted, locked data vault that no individual or organization has access to other than the owner or controller. Setopia is a member-owned and operated Web3 marketplace designed to work with the ITN using W3C Verifiable Credential, or VC standard. Vintrack uses blockchain, SSDTs, DIDs, VCs, and zero-knowledge proofs to allow the use of connected vehicle data in a seamless, privacy-preserving manner, allowing for the creation of scalable V2X applications and improving user experience at every level. For mobility service providers, Setopia Vintrack automates business processes throughout the value chain, vastly lowering operating costs and enabling countless new business models in a multi-trillion dollar pay-per-use ecosystem we call the new economy of movement. Visit dlt.mobi to find out how your organization can join Mobi. So thank you, everyone. Um, we'll touch briefly on what we are thinking to do with Setopia and ITN when it comes to fundraising. Um, as you can tell, it took us a little time to get here. Uh, this is essentially R&D for the ecosystem. It's not something that you can come in and get a solution overnight. Um, up until now, we have had many standards, many pilots, and now we're building out ITN and Setopia and we are having uh, enough traction now that we think it's time to uh, fundraise for Zootopia and ITN. Uh, since Mobi is a nonprofit, we can't do it alone on membership dues. Um, as you know and can tell, these things takes, uh, of course, a lot more resources uh, to build and scale. <clears throat> so we are in the final stages of finalizing uh, both Zootopia and ITN decks. And we uh, probably, want to raise fund mostly from our members and our members VC arms because we think that it's really important that both the ITN and Zootopia are member owned and operated. Uh, so not one single member own it, uh, but multiple members own it, uh, essentially a co-op uh, entities for both Zootopia and ITN uh, by Mobi members and other consortium members as well. Uh, we'll begin to talk with our potential investors uh, in November and December uh, and continue until um, early next year. Uh, the investment structure will be a standard SAFE, uh, which is a simple agreement for equity uh, <clears throat> and is a very common uh, structure, is one of the most common structure for early stage tech companies. Uh, and both companies are incorporated uh, in opportunity zone, uh, which provide very uh, substan substantial capital gains benefit uh, for eligible investors as well. And I'll stop here now um, and uh, open up for questions to see if there's any questions on, on what we're thinking of doing or even on technology, um, everything that we've sh shown so far. No questions? 
Ben, it's good to see you here. Um, you usually have a lot of questions for us. So can I ask you to see if you have um, anything, any questions for us today? I don't today. Okay, good. Hi, Tran, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. So I'm Manjiri from Oxum and I wanted to ask about the SSDT. Mm -hmm. After reading the articles, uh, I found out some things like um, we store and receive the information about the uh, the battery from outside sources. So this uh, sentence actually gave me thought about like how exactly does it stored, you know? So I don't know if you can give me some insights, technical insights might be. Sure. So um, uh, most of the data is is actually um, wrapped as verifiable credentials, W3, uh, following the W3C mm -hmm. yeah. verifiable credential schema. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, um, they are um, stored in uh, an encrypted data vault um, following the um, uh, the diff w three c um, emerging standard for encrypted data vaults, secure storage. Um, and uh, they you know you're you can you can share that data um, if you want you can present your your fair file credentials using using um, which are then decrypted um obviously and then uh um, re-encrypted um in a in a um encrypted uh json web token um and then uh sent to the to the uh um, recipient um using the vc http api standard um uh over over um uh um over didcom 2.0 um, for authentication and communication or OAuth 2 if it's a REST call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, I was like imagining this scenario. Suppose I have a battery and I'm putting it for recycling, then uh, I want to scan this barcode or QR code to retrieve some data. So when I scan this, so the information would be Come, uh, like gathered from the battery itself or would be from the there will be some entities which will be like sending a, sending the data or the the battery or the other product itself will be giving the data like is there any very very yeah. good very very good question um yes. so what 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 the what the um what the um, if you if you scanned it and you had a self sovereign digital twin running on your on your device, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> then it would it would uh, recognize that the QR code encodes a DID, the yes. DID of the of the of the battery. It would go out and resolve using the universal, uh, the DIF universal resolver mm -hmm. would resolve that did to the did document. Um, and then uh, it would um, it would read the um, uh, read the um, uh, data access endpoint from the services section of the did document, and then uh, you could make a data access request to that to that uh, endpoint using um, uh, um, using um, uh, a standard VC HTTP API call. Um, or um, a data sharing request um, if you want it, um, if you don't want it real time, if you want it, uh, um, if you want it async, um, you can just simply request uh, um, data sharing again through through uh, through an um, SSDT endpoint that you can find um, that's part of the um, SSDT SDK. Ah, okay, it's part of SDK, and I was uh, like in this uh, architecture diagram you have like then uh, what does the Citopia and uh, ITN comes how does the Citopia and ITN comes into the picture so so Citopia would be running uh, Citopia application would be running the SSDT um, okay. uh, on your on your on your device and um, it would if you're if if the so the ITN doesn't doesn't have to come into play at all, 
okay. um, in this in this um, in this use case, unless you're not running um, universal resolver on your device. So there's there's optionality. You can run a universal resolver on um, on an SSDT, or you don't. Uh, the mm -hmm. ITN each ITN node runs a universal resolver, so you can always resolve a, a DID by calling um, mm -hmm. the uh, an ITN uh, universal resolver. Okay. Yeah. Go so through the through the um, SDK. So that that's 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 a that's a that's a very straightforward yeah. um, way of Could way be, of doing it. It would be great if you can share some technical documentation you have or any link if you have right now. Become a become become an an ITN node um, op, um operator um now and more than happy to to share that um or if you want to wait um the ssdt is once the itn goes live the ssdt is going to be open sourced under apache okay. 2.0 and okay. the itn node arc uh, the itn node um code base is going to be open sourced under gpl v3 okay yeah sounds great yeah thank so, you but that that might take a while because we have to okay. um um go beyond not, the test the yeah develop. not so, beyond not before before second half of, of 23. So okay i think so it's, it's fastest moment. way join run a node yeah yep. sure thank you so that, that would have been my question actually um so the the live uh, going live with the, with the ITN will be planned of late next year um, or, or yep. mm -hmm. later half of next year. Um, exactly, yes. Is there any, is there any, like, what is running on the ITN currently? I understand you have a couple of nodes on the testnet, but are there any applications running on the testnet as well? Yeah, all, all the, all the Zootopia pilots are using the ITN testnet. All right, so there'd be, and the pilots, um, is there anything? Is there anything? Let's say live on the test net of the pilot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So these ones are, are potentially to be checked out. Okay. Yes, if you're if you're a Mobi member and you're more than you can participate, uh, or if you're an ITN uh, um, member and run a node, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be a, a Mobi member to run a node on the ITN or uh, the other two consortia, MEF member, for example. Okay, um, but, and so therefore, peak we as Mobi member. Yes. Could, yes. Could have of course, you can. That. You can. You yeah. can participate in these Zootopia pilots, and you can. You can um, also participate uh, in the ITN if you then so choose. Okay. Um, how can I participate in the Zootopian pilots? So in the working groups, um, as you know, every working yeah. groups, we have pilots that come up and doing before the pilots, we talk about uh, data schema, for example, where the data come from, uh, mm -hmm. who has access to what. And then once that's done, uh, then we do the pilot and we do the demo. Our roadmap um, I mentioned earlier is next year. Uh, right now we just form, we are considering forming the Zootopia technical uh, working group. And we invite our members to join that. And that will also develop uh, a timeline or, or milestone uh, so that we can get Zootopia uh, up and running as well so that our members can run nodes in Zootopia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when that will be, Andreas uh, would have more insight as to when we should and have Zootopia. Be, yeah, and that will be individual to each other pilots probably as well, right? Uh, yeah, the go live for for um, as a as a uh, in production, the dealer floor plan audit is is slated for for 2023. Um, in in conjunction with the with the um, with the ITN. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, then I understand also that the result of the pilots will be the demos, right? Correct. Um, amongst others, yes. Yes. Yeah, great. And of course, then so, this needs to be inter interoperable with the other pilots and the ITN as well. Sorry. They are because they're because by by default because they're using the the self sovereign digital twin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. So uh, one other thing um, we want to mention is 
So Zootopia, we take the SSDT uh, from the ITN. And now, as you know, we've been uh, building a lot of, uh, well, we're creating a lot of standard and we also demoing a lot of pilots. And the result of that is uh, for every pilot, we are starting to do APIs, um, data schema standard for each one of those use case. And those will be, of course, available to uh, on Zootopia website, which we'll be building, and we hope that will be uh, used by members and, and non-members later on who choose to use Zootopia um, as the marketplace for all these applications. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so right now, uh, to get more information about Zootopia, that will mean that I would have to join the working groups of the pilots, right? That's correct. Correct. Okay, great. Um, and is there any way, because my calendar is absolutely full currently, um, is there any way to read about the current status of the pilots without actually going into the meetings? Uh, sure, you can join the MTS call bi-weekly. Yeah, Perfect. the MTS bi-weekly, uh, we talk about all the pilots and all the working groups. Then I'll meet you there. Perfect. And when we have demo videos to show, then we'll show them there. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And stay tuned because uh, this week there, there are some exciting development that we hope to do a demo that is incorporating not just ITN, um, Zootopia uh, that we, you see here, but um, another potential uh, network as well so that we can pull and push data to each other. So we hope to be able to do that with our members in a in a few months or so. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you for joining. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.